How y'all doing? How y'all doing? This is Alvin with Trying Success on the Old Fashioned Health Network. Good health inside and out. I have a guest today, which is a friend of mine, and I'm really excited about doing this interview, Mr. Ivan Walker. Welcome to the show, man. Thank you for being on the show. And uh, can you tell the people a little bit about yourself and what you do and who you are? Uh, sure. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, as you said, my name's Ivan Walker. I'm a software engineer at Amazon Web Services. Actually, I should correct that. I'm a software manager now at Amazon, uh, where I manage a team. Thank you. Uh, where I manage a team of eight engineers, where we support startup companies uh, with a program called AWS Activate. And we give startups up to $100,000 in credits to try Amazon Web Services to help them see the power of the cloud to build out their business ideals. Uh, my team in particular works on personalization and how to get the customers the right solution at the right time using information about the startup. I've uh, been in this role for about six months, and previously I was a software engineer uh, on the team uh, before moving to manage the team. And uh, going further back than that, uh, I did my bachelor's and master's degree in computer engineering at Jackson State University. And then from there, I went to Georgia Tech, and I like to say I worked on a PhD in computer engineering for a little too long. Started working for a startup company back in 2015. Uh, that company, ParkPick, uh, uh, was acquired by Amazon in 2016, and that's what started my journey as a software engineer and now manager at Amazon. Back to Jackson State. What are you working on as far as uh, working with? Are you working on anything with Jackson State, or what are you doing with them? Uh, uh, great question. So I am reaching back, working with the computer engineering department and with the College of Science, Engineering and Technology in general. And so I have a nonprofit that I work with in Jackson called the Bean Path. And so we're looking to increase the access and engagement uh, to technology and for technologists in the Jackson area. And so we're looking at uh, providing uh, mentorship and apprenticeship opportunities uh, through that organization for current students and just students in the environment in general. And then beyond that, uh, I also work directly with the computer engineering department with uh, their seniors on their, what we, in engineering, you have to do a capstone design, which means you have to build something in your last year that pulls all your skills together to graduate in engineering. And so I'm leveraging my skills and expertise from Amazon and execution and bringing that to kind of make sure the course feels more modern in terms of how we execute with the current technologies available to us. And I'm actually uh, considering teaching an introduction to engineering course in the fall uh, that they're going to start offering. One of the things that concerns me with tech altogether or anything software or engineering is I'm more or less kind of concerned about community uh, possibly being left behind because they are not educated on technology and how tech changes. Something simple as uh, the way things we used to do things with certain softwares we, we don't do anymore uh, and things like that. And especially in rural areas, uh, it just seems like if they're not... You about to say? I was going to. I was just going to say your statement plays perfectly into the pandemic, mm -hmm. and so with the pandemic, we've all been working more remote, uh, right? Uh, prior to the pandemic, that wasn't as uh, well understood that we could be in these remote environments, not co-located in the same physical space, mm -hmm. and still get things done. And so for me, I'm based in Atlanta and I like it because I'm near a major airport, but I'm also only six hours drive from Mississippi to check on my parents and a one hour flight. And just right as the pandemic was starting, I fought for that because they wanted me to come out to California. And that's when I switched teams because I said, I'm not coming out to California. You I honestly told them uh, point blank, you, you're not offering enough money for me to come out to California. And they told me, uh, well, you know, don't, don't worry about that. And I said, I'm the successful one in my family. I can't be poor and struggling. <laughs> I said, what kind of message would that send to my niece, nephews and others? You know, if I go out to Cali and I'm struggling, you know, after all of these years of schooling. 
And so when you talk about being left behind, it's bigger than just technology previously. It's about this notion that when you see people such as myself or uh, the founder of the Being Path, Dr. Nashley Cephas and others like us, success to us and for us always looked like leaving our community. So we had to kind of preach this message of, no, we can contribute to Amazon and these ecosystems, but where we're most needed is the communities in which we came from. And we got to a point where we were successful enough to be unwilling to compromise on that. We can deliver the results you need here in this corporate world, but we're not going to be too far removed from the communities that matter to us. And breaking down that notion of other that has so long existed in our community that you're the other black person. You're the good black person, right? And it's all a part of cynicism. So, with where you are now, can can you um, point directly to where you've seen uh, a change that helped uh, the community at, at large, as opposed to where they were at first? Uh, yeah, I think just simply showing up sometimes, right? Uh, we think it's a lot sometimes, but there's different levels to lifting the community. And the first step is just exposure. I didn't know any engineers growing up, or so I say. I actually knew two, my parents. My dad was basically a mechanical engineer in the way we worked on vehicles. And I say my mom was an industrial engineer. I'm the youngest of 14. She knew every sale at the grocery store, at the department store. She bought clothing months out. She projected which size clothes and shoes we needed, right? All of that is engineering, forecasting, and planning. And so we, we don't taught in our communities to think of that, but those same skills are transferable, right? Uh, and that's what companies are looking for, people who can deal with adversity and, and help project out into the future. Uh, based off seeing things, right? So she knew, okay, winter clothes were going on sale in the summer, summer clothes going on sale in the winter. Simple observation, but saved a lot of money. And so, you know, I say I grew up with two engineers, even though they didn't have the degrees. Uh, once I figured out what it meant to be an engineer, I realized, you know, it's simply just a formal way of solving problems that's repeatable. And you make it sound a, 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 a attainable to basically the way you just put it, you make software engineer attainable to to anybody but otherwise before before uh now or possibly anybody hearing you say that they think software engineer is like oh it's too big for me i'm scared it's a whole bunch of math and you just broke it down i, I don't know if it could be broken down in, anymore basically yeah it's just a recipe right uh we call it algorithms in software engineering that's just the ingredients and the steps you follow to you know get your dish it's the same, you know, it's the type of data structures I need and the way I need to process the data and those data structures to make some use of the information. We call it data structures and algorithms, you know, before I became a software engineer, it's called the ingredients and recipe. And what, what, do, what do you see or what would you like to see in the next 10 years as far as a uh, community is concerned back at home or in Mississippi? What would you like to see in the next 10 years happen? Oh, uh, I often tell my mentees that they're going to be better than me. Mm -hmm. And that often surprises them because, you know, once they find out who I am, you know, I've talked to some students at Jackson State coming behind and, you know, they Googled me eventually. And it was like, you didn't say all of this. And I say, well, I didn't need to say all of that to get you where you needed to be because this conversation is about you, not me. Mm -hmm. And so in terms of thinking about it from that perspective in 10 years, I, I want these students to be better than me. And I sincerely mean that. And they say, well, how can I be better than you? I say, because I didn't have me when I came through. Mm -hmm. So you literally get to stand on my shoulders. You get to see that this is possible. Uh, you get to learn from the mistakes I've made. You get to, you know, basically get everything I know for free. So I expect you to be better than me. I expect you to reach back to the community. I expect you to, you know, provide opportunities for others. And so 10 years from now, I want to see more people like me in positions where I'm at. You know, when you look at these other countries, they have a pipeline. You know, they come from their country. Uh, they do a master's degree or some advanced degree in the United States. And then they get these roles at Amazon and Apple and Google. And if you think about we set up a similar type pipeline 
the impact it would have on our communities when you're talking a hundred thousand dollars base salary, like minimum, right? Like coming out of school, I I thought that was the 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 goal. And then I used to say, man, I, I, if I could get ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars plus one salary, you know, I'd be happy. And now I'm like, ah. You know, and and that's not to gloat or anything. It's just to show my naivety, right? Uh, in terms of the industry, the pay, and things like that. So I, I want these students and the next generation to be pursuing these opportunities uh, at this level. You know, not necessarily even having to try and be Mark Zuckerberg or Bill Gates, but just you know, an entry level software engineering role that you know is paying you know six figures. Mm -hmm. And you know, imagine the impact that could have on a 22 year old or 24 year old. And, and, and not only that, a 24, a 24 year old's family, because, you know, as, as we are at home, the salary I got is just not my salary by myself. I got a cousin and some aunts and somebody else. And we all eat out that same salary. You're the one who made it right. They supported you to make it to and pull them up to some degree. Even yeah. if it's, even if it translates into you translate into you just teaching them what you know. It don't have to be necessarily tangibly money, you know, it's teaching them or open a pathway for them to, to do better than what you were able to do or not have to do the same struggle. When I came to Jack State, I came to Jack State with $40. I will never forget that day. But, you know, it's, so now our my nephews and nieces in school, they don't go to school with $40. They go to school with a car and a debit card. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah. a, a good car. Cause a good car. My <laughs> freshman year, yeah, we took my mom's old minivan that I used to drive to Walmart, and we were headed down Highway 80, and I was cranking it back up, and everybody from the Dixon Hall was like, wait, what? And they was like, I didn't even know you could restart a vehicle in motion. And I was like, yeah, you just kick it in neutral, and just turn it, you know, the water bit. heater going out a little bit. But, you know, and we kept going to Walmart. It was two in the morning. Didn't skip a beat. And now they got new cars. They go to school like they just new cars and credit cards and nice dorms right. and all that kind of stuff. I mean, Jackson State probably it, it, it was it wasn't. But for me, when I was there, it was a little less glamorous than what it is when you came, you know. Uh, you didn't have. Uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. We probably stayed in the same Dixon Hall, oh, though. Uh, that's same. when I learned about shower shoes freshman year. Oh, me too. Uh, you my first it? time. Let me ask you. Did you, yeah, did you I have, ever, uh, when you were there? So I was at 83 to 87. So did you ever did you, the time you were there, did y'all were running to the showers turning cold because the water was running? Mm -hmm. So I stay. I was the last class, I think, that stayed in Dixon Hall before they renovated it. Oh, wait, so, yeah. Yeah, it was the same Dixon, no elevator half the time, right. uh, carrying your biggest. clothes up the back stairs. Right. Uh, you know, now they got a washroom inside the dorm. They don't even know about the laundry center that was across campus where you had to go, you know. And so uh, good stuff. But, yeah, you're right. Now they, you know, my nephews at Jackson State has a nice car. Doesn't have to worry about it cutting off on them. I used to say that van kept me calm because a lot of times I wanted to, like, you know, get aggressive with someone on the road, but it had a little stutter to it. So when I pressed the gas, it'd be about five seconds later before it and took gone. off. <laughs> so, I, so um, yeah, I said, well, that keeps going. So, so, um, so still back in, in the community thing, uh, one of the things in Mississippi that I, I like to, to share with people, it's not New York, it's not Chicago, it's not California, but it's just as good as all those places. I think the struggle is we just don't have the uh, financial, um, the people making the money like they do in California, New York to enjoy. There's a lot of things in my mind in Mississippi that you can really enjoy. And there's a lot of room for growth to enjoy more with the right amount of money, uh, resource that's put into it. And what you all are doing uh, with your nonprofit. Now, where is I, I know you were working on something, uh, some plans to do some build out and stuff like that. And yeah, so actually, uh, that is the other side of the nonprofit, the Jackson Tech District. And so Dr. Cephas bought, uh, I think she's at 14, maybe 20 acres of land now, okay. uh, uh, planning out a multi-million dollar uh, development mm -hmm. that will, you know, include a mixed use uh, space of, you know, the current model, you know, eat, live, work, play uh, type setup and, you know, going through some different models of what that community can and should look like uh, 
in terms of the right mix of technology and makerspace and, you know, innovation combined with, you know, affordable housing and things like that. So what would you tell a younger version of yourself, uh, if you, a younger Ivan, what would you tell a younger Ivan when he talks, when you coming into, about being into, being into engineering? <laughs> it might sound a little weird to people who know me, but make mistakes. Um, I think for me, younger, uh, so much was about, as it is with many of people from our community, right, of navigating the space properly, uh, you know, presenting myself in the most respectable way, uh, you know, and, and now 15 years later, you know, that kind of me here, but also looking back at the current crop of students and new hires and realize, you know, maybe I had a little bit more flexibility than I thought, uh, you know, take those risks, trust in myself and my skills and, you know, don't be afraid to make mistakes or fail. Uh, because one thing I always say is with young, talented African-Americans, men and women uh, such as myself, it's not a bad thing, but we're often encouraged, I know I was heavily, to go get PhDs. Mm -hmm. And I'm not against that, but I don't think enough was preached about paving my own path uh, back then, right? Uh, no one's telling Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, or you know Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos to go get a PhD, right. you know? Hopefully and so you know. now, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, half of them, uh, at least half, don't have degrees to my knowledge. Right. Uh, and then, you know, uh, I know Jeff has a bachelor's degree from Princeton in computer science. And, you know, he built Amazon. And so you no know, one's, you know, thinking about what degrees he didn't have or, you know, whether he has the right credentials. And so that's kind of a slight way of gatekeeping. But, you know, I want to encourage those behind me to just do it. Make your results so, so clear and, and so powerful that they can't be ignored. Mm. Almost a Maya Angelou quote there. I kind of like that a little bit. So, so. Um, <laughs> well, I do a little Maya. No, go ahead. <laughs> we would give it a break. So, so, man, um, the big thing I hear a lot, and I've seen it on social media, I've interviewed quite a few people especially in the African-American community when it comes to females. I see a lot of things saying uh, they don't have, it's, it's hard for them to break into tech. Uh, and I know you may not have the magic wand to just to handle that. I mean, because it's not like Amazon says Ivan, it says Amazon, you know. So uh, based on what you have seen or what the best knowledge you could give them to possibly offer to them, what, what would you tell anybody for that matter to say it's hard to break into tech? So first, I stopped using females once I became more educated because it kind of objectifies women, right? Makes them somewhat of an object. Someone educated me on that. And so I, I say African-American women are girls, right? Kind of, you know, doesn't cluster all African-American women into one thing because those girl and women, right, helps break them out and where they're at in different stages of their lives. So just something as simple as that, right? I, I've already humanized them in my mind in a way that I didn't even realize I was dehumanizing black or women in general, right? Uh, as we're taught, you know, women, females, females, and it's like, well, female is a sex, you know, uh, like a dog can be a female, right? And so uh, thinking about that and then taking that, I'm like, okay, now we're thinking about African-American girls, African-American women, ladies, where are they at in different stages of their lives or journeys? And I think there are a lot of similarities between African-American men and women in the sense of, you know, they're, they're going into a space where they're going to be a minority. <laughs> And so that kind of ties back to, you know, find that balance of being your authentic self, because uh, so breaking in is breaking in in a way that works for you, because if you come in, you know, following all the rules, but you're unhappy, uh, a lot of people skip over the part where people get into tech and they leave. Mm. You know, uh, and so much of the focus is on on getting folks in and not enough on sustainability. Right. And so we have these conversations internally and I say, well, what are you doing to actively make me want to stay? 
right? You know, signing bonus or this or that. And so if you aware of that, you know, you start in a way that's authentic to you. You know, how are you approaching and getting the skills in a way that aligns with your value system, with your life? You know, find some mentors. There are a lot of black women and me and mentors are willing to be mentored if you just ask, you know, and that's easy to do now. You can just get on Twitter, inbox somebody, hit them in the DM, set up a informal meeting, you know, and people just like now, you know, uh, the information is so uh, ubiquitous that, you know, you can get it from multiple sources. I always encourage people, don't take my advice at face value. You know, I'm just one man with one story. You know, I try and be objective, but I always want you to get a second, third and fourth opinion. And I think then that leads me to the primary thing is own your decisions. If you fail, know why you fail. If you succeed, know why you succeeded. But don't just say I did what I I did what I've been suggested because X, Y, Z have your reasons because that's, what's going to set you apart in life is when you learn how to take people's advice and input as advice and opinions, but own the decision. I, man, I, I have appreciate, I really appreciate having you on here. I, I'm just going to wrap this up with one final question. Well, two, um, my first question before my last question is what do you think about, Tech, where do you think Jackson State is, is is as far as on the on the scale when it comes to the tech the tech or the engineering world? Do you think we right up there amongst the best, or are we getting there, or what what do you think? Oh, that's a loaded question. Uh, I think last I checked and or heard, Jackson State was the top three grantor of uh, bachelor's degrees in, I think, computer engineering uh, to African-Americans in the country amongst HBCUs. Okay. That's great. Uh, do we have room for improvement? Yes. Uh, I, I think uh, we're making do with what we have and doing a great, but uh, I think, you know, as always, there's room for improvement, but you know, I can't say that without saying improving or making progress requires money. And I never tire of preaching this message. Uh, I was on another call where someone framed it as risk capital. We need more risk capital at Jackson State in our communities. We need to get our engineering program to be as famous as our football program is now, right? Uh, that's, um, engineering is a much more sustainable path to grow our communities, right? Uh, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but the tech industry is growing, looking for more product managers, project managers, software developers, software managers, right? Uh, let's just say there's a thousand of those jobs, right? A thousand six-figure jobs out there, 10,000 even maybe, versus, you know, a few million-dollar jobs uh, within sports. So I think just in general, we, we want to elevate our academics and engineering with it being the hot area it is to be at least on par with our football program and its notoriety. I like that. Well, you pretty much answered my second question, uh, uh, the way you spoke highly of, of our alma mater, so I appreciate that. I want you to know anytime there's new tech information, we don't have a, a Elon Musk to call us or anybody like that or, or Mark Zuckerberg, but we have Ivan. If there's any information that you want to share with the public at any time, you're welcome to use our platform. If there's latest, uh, w, I know the, the Web 2, Web 3, whatever is coming out that you <laughs> think we need to at least let us know about because one of the things that you know that I do with the school, I uh, implemented this um, uh, new class. We have uh, uh, NFTs for kids, and I only I, I need to join. Yeah, it, the, the class is amazing. The guy that teaches and and speaking about young people, the guy's twenty five to teach the class, and he's so into it, and he he's so so out for it. But we created a class called NFTs for for kids, and it's like a six course thing, and. Uh, I nice. kind of like yourself. I'm trying to find a way to give back to the community as as best I can. You know, I may not be that NFT instructor, but um, I mean, just just giving back. So basically, I'm telling you, whatever you have that you want to share with us, 
please feel free to let me know. I mean, studio, just just let me know, man, because we we trying to do what we can do to help you do what you can do. Perfect. Uh, will do. I'm sure I'll be back. Um, yes, you will. All right, man. Thank you so much for the mm-hmm. show, uh, for your time. Make sure you have a great one, y'all. Make sure you share, watch, and follow. And Ivan, is there a social media anything you want to share, a website that you want to share with them about your nonprofit so they could do anything, support, or whatever? Uh, sure. The nonprofit is The Bean Path, T H E B E A N Path, on all platforms. So you can find us on Instagram, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn. And my personal social media handle is I Walk the Line uh, on all platforms. That's I W A L K D A L I N E on all platforms. Are you taking uh, donations? Uh, sure. Uh, I will. You when you go to the Bean Path uh, IG or uh, Twitter, there should be a donation link in our profile. So we welcome any and all donations to support and assist the community. All right, man. I would thank you so much, man. You have a great rest of the week. All right, thanks. You do the same. All right, bye. All right, bye.